Do you enjoy a good rummage in the junk? Yeah, me too. But no folks, we're not in Hard Off today. We're at the Tokyo City Flea Market. We must be cautious. Exactly, because we can find some of the best deals on retro games and consoles anywhere, right here. I'm talking about a Nerf Herder heaven here. So if you're a scruffy looking Nerf Herder like me, sit tight. We'll unearth some amazing deals today for future refurbing and modding glory. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you what treasures I took home with me too. So without further ado, let's get scruffy looking. Hi, I'm scruffy looking RGB, and I take you on retro game hunting, modding, and refurbing adventures all over Japan. In today's video, we're at the Tokyo City Flea Market, where I find some of the best deals ever. The Tokyo City Flea Market is located in Oi Keiba Jo in Ota Ward of Tokyo. Why horses, you ask? Well, this is a horse racing. Yes, the Japanese love a good gamble. Whether it be horses, boats, or pachinko, we've got it all here in Tokyo. But if you import retro games from Japan, you already know, I'm sure, with Derby Stallion being the gold standard. <laughs> All right, it's an overcast day here in Tokyo at Ota Ward Horse Racing Track parking lot. Bargains for days. We've got clothes, mounds and mounds of clothes to dig through. Also tools, We've got lots of drills and saws, chainsaws. Can get anything here at the city flea market. Suitcases, bags, toys, furniture, statues, all kind of interesting. Boxes, knickknacks, and trinkets. And I spy some anime soundtracks here. Here we've got uh, Dragon Ball Z, The Journey of the Seven Balls. Chalala, it's got all the hits on it. It's got all the Dragon Ball cuts on there. We've got Ranma one half. And another Ranma one half. Ongaku Dojo. Yu Yu Hakusho. Pretty cool guitar that guy's holding. But uh, here are some games. We got the console of all. The Super Famicom. Heavily yellowed. Next to a PlayStation. Has two controllers. The Super Famicom is well yellowed. I wonder if it is a one chip. Gotta check. What's it say? It's pretty heavy. Uh, this looks like a really early revision, so probably not. Um, so they did does come with a controller, which is heavily scruffy. Here's a Sony 7000 series, I believe. I think this is like one of the first ones. It has an orange clear memory card in it, so that's nice. Two controllers, and that guy just snagged a Super Famicom game out of my face. What a nice gentleman. Um, we found some more boxes. And we have Super Famicom box game. Super Tetris 2 Bomb Bliss, I hear, is pretty good. Um, I have not played it before, but I hear this is even better. We got Tetris Gaiden, um, which is supposed to be a lot of fun. has a lot of cute characters in it. And uh, it's one I've been trying to pick up for a while. And these uh, boxes are in pretty good uh, condition. Super F1 Circus 2. But uh, not super sought after games. But it's always nice to see games boxed in such good condition at the flea market. All you CRT fans out there, I found this one. I'm pretty sure it's a black and white TV, portable TV. It's a Panasonic, looks like. Pretty cool, either way. Found a lot of camera gear. We've got uh, lights here, Mega Blitz, uh, flash, all kind of lens covers, and uh, some sort of a handy cam station. I'm not sure if this is an editing station or what. Just maybe it's a control unit for the camcorder. I'm not sure. But it's always interesting what you find here. And a little bit further, we have a uh, PlayStation 2. 
let's swoop in and see what we got. Lots of nicks and scrapes. It's a SCPH 30,000. So a really early version of the PS2. It is heavy. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a uh, an expansion pack on it, but uh, still cool to see. PlayStation 2's just hanging out. I do like to check these um, adapter rat's nests because sometimes you get lucky and find uh, some cool stuff in here. It does take a while to unwind, but that's kind of sort of the fun of it. Never know what you're going to find out of the rat's nest. Some instant cameras. There's a Wii uh, adapter there. Wii AC adapter. Maybe somebody needs one of those. You've got a, what is this, a card reader? Maybe it was an MP3 player, I'm not too certain. And we move along and uh, see some Japanese tea sets here. Some very traditional looking type uh, ornaments and whatnot. And we come across some Kinnikuman. I don't know who out there is familiar with these, but uh, they're called muscle men in the United States, in the West. Um, Kinnikuman is pretty big over here. Kinnikuman Keshi is what they're called. So they're like eraser figures. But I remember collecting these when I was a kid. And Japan just has so many more, just everything Keshi, like Godzilla, um, even Famicom, like Mario, and all kind of Nintendo characters. I know they've got Rockman, so, you know, I'm always looking for those. But these are still cool to dig through. They've seen some better days, but uh, these are always interesting for me. I, I used to be a big toy collector, and I still enjoy looking through those puzzle-type games. Analog games, if you will. Clothing. More camera. Oh, we got some more PS2 action here with a controller in it. Um, probably another early PS2 there. No expansion pack. But we do have a DS here. The original DS. It is has seen better days, but it could be used in a nice uh, modding video. How many of you out there collect DS's or mod DS's? Let me know. What else do we got? Some interesting PlayStation controllers. This clear program pad has the PlayStation logo on it. And a clear Hori PlayStation controller. Looks pretty cool. I do like clear controllers, so I might have to take one of these home with me. Kakigori, kakigori machine, an ice maker, shaved ice makers there. Some pretty cool toys here. A pineapple Man and Pikachu. They've got Meidamo Yaji from Gegege no Kitaro, one of my favorite uh, Famicom games there of all time. One of my first Famicom games. But Gegege no Kitaro. The Monster Boy. I did a uh, review on the game if you'd like to check it out. Pikachu. It's interesting to see. Cool scotch on there. This man is dressed like a zebra. Looking good. Had some nice music playing. Some cosmetic goods. And uh, this gentleman here really wanted me to look at his knives, so. I thought I'd take a look just out of politeness. All right, that's enough of that. Now what I really was looking at was this here. This Sega Saturn. I'm sorry, this is a Sega Dreamcast, excuse me. Has two controllers. It's a little bit uh, dirty, but this would clean up really nice. It even has the, uh, the units inside. 
what are they, the END or the DMU units or whatever. He's got some DSs over here too. There's a DS light here. Fortunately, these don't play GBA games, but uh, still cool to see. And an original DS, this is a nice red one. Actually, it's not in that bad a shape. Looks pretty darn good. It's really nice. It would clean up pretty nice, I think. But the Dreamcast, it has its uh, adapter, has two controllers. And there's this savior stick here. Looks like a nice one. I don't have too many stick controllers. I don't know too much about them, but that one looks pretty nice. I think it's USB though. So it looks like this one is going for 2000 he said, I think. And then I asked him about uh, the Sonic game down here, how much he wanted for it. And this uh, DS, how much he wanted for it, and he said 1000 each of those, and then the game was 500 yen. So not, not a bad deal at all. It was complete, except there's a bit of water damage on it. On the back here you can see. So might be worth it never know Sonic Adventure is a good one all right and back to some more toys here uh, I was looking for game related uh, Keshi so I found a Triceratops and a bunch of Gundam King Nikuman here's Arale Chan I think her name is and I think it's a jump comic, but there's also a Famicom game with her in it. I'm not too familiar with it, but I thought that was kind of cool. And we have a Gundam related looking character here. There's a Godzilla, it's pretty cool. I just like the design of these things. They're really neat to look at. Here we've got uh, the Final Fantasy character, I can't remember his name, sorry. A clone here. Play Computer Retro. 118 games. Comes with 118 games already loaded. So that's pretty cool. So it has games on it and you can play Famicom games on it. Found some more game stuff. There's a DS. I think an 8-bit Do controller? Not sure. There's a Pikachu clock back there. I don't think that's an 8-bit dough controller, but some sort of a controller there. Probably a Bluetooth controller. There's some PlayStation controllers, cell phones, watches, random piggy bank looking type things. But that's the cool thing about the flea market. You never know what you're gonna find this guy's shop is here every single week. It's just a mess of stuff. He just plops down on the ground. People dig through it. I found interesting things here before, like this controller. It's so generic and so like, it looks like a baby's controller or something. Just random stuff in here. It's like a PlayStation controller, keyboards, just a free-for-all speakers it's a mini disc like system stereo there heads <laughs> heads heads for like like uh, cutting hair like practicing cutting hair sewing machine vacuum cleaners there's another ps2 there soccer balls they got some nice uh, vacuum cleaners here some Daiso, there's a PS3 TV card hookup thing. I'm not really sure what those are. There's a projector, Super Famicom, and S16. I'm not sure if that is a one chip or not, probably not, but is pretty yellow We've got another one here that's even more yellow what is the serial number on it yeah that's a pretty early revision I don't think so Hori controllers 
PlayStation controllers. Ooh, slam dunk. Slam dunk uh, mini disc, I believe. Here's some anime mini disc. Anime soundtrack mini discs. Bunch of cords, saws, tools, drills. More toys. Got Adam, Astro Boy, bunch of cute self B toys. Just a Lawson Bear, our Tanuki, Raccoon, Mitomon, famous uh, Japanese characters here and there. And Pan Man and uh, Gegege no Kitaro. We have a pair from the uh, eyeball earlier. Medama Oyaji. This is Kintaro himself. Here we have a uh, Famicom disc system. And a Game Gear battery pack. That's cool. I've never come across one of those before. That might be handy to have. If I ever grab a Game Gear. There's a Super Famicom. A pair of controllers. And an adapter. The disc system doesn't look too bad. It's, it's just dirty. I'm sure the belt's broken on it. But it comes with its adapter, which is really good to have those two things. So you get two VHS tapes for 100 yen. There were some interesting ones in here. Here we've got uh, Arnold and Danny DeVito in Twins. That was a good one, a classic. It's not a Tuma. And then uh, Cyborg Cop 3. So, probably not an American movie. Psycho Diver. Interesting anime. All right. I found this micro. This micro. SP or whatever it's called and a large DS light and another one uh, sorry DSLL light I think I think they're lights I'm not sure they were in in pretty good condition uh, the guy definitely wanted too much for them the micro was like 18,000 yen which I thought was kind of ridiculous at the flea market. I mean, I know they go for about that, but I can't pay that at the flea market. To this guy who probably swooped in on some other dude and bought it in the morning and then put it in his own shop. That's annoying. Here we got a nice little collection. We got a Wii, a red Wii, a special edition one, GameCube, N64 controllers, PlayStation controllers, Wii U, Lots of DS's of varying types. Very cool to see. And we got some Star Wars goods here. I might have to get this helmet because uh, it's one I don't have. Collector helmets and mass Starfighter. Naboo Starfighter helmet. Really cool. All right, we got our goods. Let's go check them out, shall we? found this video useful and you really want to help out the channel, please consider donating by the way of super thanks. Just click the heart with the dollar sign and choose the amount you'd like to donate. Every little bit will go back to the channel to improve the quality of my videos. Plus, R2 really needs a new motivator. And if you can't donate, that's no biggie. Just don't forget to subscribe and click the bell for new weekly refurbs, modding, and game hunting from Japan because it's free and it happens every week. Okay, let's check out our flea market treasures, shall we? First up, we got this boxed Tetris Gaiden 
for the Super Famicom. It was only about 800 yen, and I've heard a lot of good things about this game, so I'm eager to try it out. It has cute box art, and even includes the warranty and a pristine manual, which is always a plus. That leads us to my second pickup of the day. You guessed it, this scruffy looking Super Famicom console came with two Super Famicom controllers and an AC adapter. I'm sure you're all curious to know if this bad boy powers up. Let's see, shall we? I've got her hooked up to my PVM using original Super Famicom multi-out cables for a composite video. Here it goes. Hmm, a garbled mess. Well, there is sound, but no video. Let's try some HD retrovision cables so we can see if the RGB out work. Ready? on. Well, we do have a picture, now just a bit garbled at the top of the screen. Interesting. It's kind of strange that we get nothing for composite, but we do get something for RGB. I've come across this before actually, and in that case the RGB actually worked flawlessly, while the composite didn't work at all. The two controllers and the adapter also work. Well, this Super Famicom kind of works in RGB anyways, so I'll definitely revisit this Super Famicom in a future refurbing video. Moving on, I also picked up this Famicom Disk System, complete with cartridge adapter. And these beauties are known for their rubber belts literally disintegrating. Disintegrating. Oh. That's right, but they're not too difficult to repair. So let's just see if a miracle happens here and give it a quick test. The gears are spinning as you can hear and see by the red LED indicator. And as expected, an error. This will be yet another future refurbing project. Next, we have this Game Gear battery pack, which I've never seen before, so it was an interesting pickup. It'll come in handy when I pick up a Game Gear in the future. I also picked up some Kin Nikuman Keshi figures, which are really nostalgic for me. Here we have a Raleigh Chun and another pose from her. A clear SD Godzilla, which looks really cool. And this is a possible enemy of Godzilla? I'm not familiar with. And then we have this actual Kinikuman character too. Sorry I don't know the name offhand. These little figures will come in handy for a future project that I'm working on. But I really like the look of these figures. I remember playing with muscles as a kid. It's so cool to see the different characters and sculpts that they have here in Japan. This little bag of random picks was only 100 yen, so I'm definitely going to go check those out again next time. Today's pickups in total, I spent about 2,900 yen. Tetris Gaiden rang in about 800 yen, the Kiniku Keshi was a whopping 100 yen, and the Super Famicom console the FDS and the Game Gear battery pack came in a bundle all together for 2,000 yen. So we definitely got some savings here today, I think. What did you think about my flea market hunt and pickups? Let me know what you would have picked up down in the comments. Thanks for hanging out with me today on today's flea market hunting video. Definitely keep a lookout for my refurbishing videos for the Famicom disc and the Super Famicom here. Those videos will become available at the end screen once they're finished. But thank you all again. Take care, everyone. But remember, stay scruffy. Who's scruffy looking?